What's up, everybody? Welcome back. I am excited. Why am I excited? Well, I'm so glad you asked. I'm excited because I got a mic, and this mic is going to help the production quality of these next videos in this video series much better. Uh, you don't have to listen to the creaking of my chair, the fan from my Surface Book, because that thing struggles to encode these videos, and in the other room, you don't have to hear my family being all crazy and whatnot. So uh, I'm, I'm super pumped about that. I hope you're excited as well. Um, please leave a comment below and tell me how you feel and how it compares to the other ones. I'm, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that. Let's go ahead and dive in as we continue our study on HTTP and we look at what's happening at the packet level in an HTTP communication. So follow along. I'm going to flip over to simulation mode so that we can look at this at a detailed level. Um, I'm going into PC0 and I'm going to start this communication by opening up the web browser and through the web browser I am going to search the IP address of the web server which is 0 0.5 in my topology I hit enter and remember it's not gonna happen right away because in simulation mode we have to skip ahead in the process so I'm gonna do that so I'm gonna go ahead and go to skip and we're gonna see this packet get formed I'm gonna look at the packet and I want you to see that the outbound PDU details have some interesting pieces of information, right? So notice in, in anything with the OSI model and anything in networking, there's a source and a destination. Remember that. There's always a source. There's always a destination. So we see here in the IP header, you've got your source IP, which is the client's IP address, destination IP, which is the server's IP address. Then here's, here's a big piece of information, um, and we'll get into TCP as we discuss the OSI model, that is source ports and destination ports. So know this, source ports on a client end are randomly generated, typically in the 1000s, right? So they'd like be you know, 1001 or 1020 or all the way up into like 2000. So that's one thing to look out for. Destination ports are usually well-known ports. Those are ports you should probably memorize. One of those is HTTP, right? And HTTP without encryption is port 80. Right, is one of the most popular ports out there and also one of the hardest to secure because of all the things that are web apps these days, right? So know that it's a des the destination port is 80. But you might be wondering, what is a port? Well, a port is an identifier for an application. You know how an IP address is used to locate a device on a network? Well, once that traffic gets to the device, how does the device know how to where to send it? to what application to send it, right? I like to think of the movie Monsters, Inc. Uh, you know, Monsters, Inc. with this this business that, you know, scared kids for a living, you know, to fuel their economy. They were essentially a utility company that they got screams as the energy source, right? But all that said is, uh, think about Monsters, Inc. like it was a computer. And all those doors in Monsters, Inc. were ports or applications right so even if we think about it in terms of your house if the IP address helps you get to the house then the ports help you get into the different doors or the different rooms in the house so keep that in mind computers have multiple applications that are using the network right and ports help identify those applications so we're gonna check this out let's skip ahead and, and see has the PC generated that HTTP request for the website that HTTP request gets to the server and the server processes and says, okay, this is destined for my IP address on port 80, so I'm going to send that traffic, once I get it and process it, to the application or the web stack. You notice I have a web stack here, and we'll talk about that in another video, but just know it's all the technology that gets the web server to work and deliver web pages. So now I'm going to go into this packet on the server side and, and we're going to look at what the outbound PDU details are once the servers processed it. So notice everything flips really. The source was the client. Now the client's the destination because this is a response, an HTTP response. So notice how do I know it's an HTTP response? Well, I see the source port being 80, which is 
the server where it's coming from, right? And then the destination port is uh, 1029, which is that randomly generated port on the client. That's how it keeps track of that conversation is the port, right? So it's going to send it back. And as it sends it back to the client, it also... Uh, included the web page that's written in HTML and, you know, has like CSS and all the style stuff added to it as well. So it, it got back to the client. Once the client processes it, the web browser formats it to be read by us humans. So that's a pretty cool process that was, you know, pretty in depth. So feel free to go back through that, this video and, and, uh, practice and, and study it. Right. So, um, in the next video, we're actually going to explore DNS, which is how we can use names to reach resources and websites over the web. I'll see you there.